Hello! It's been a few days, well, a few weeks, since I was last able to do any recording, which is why you've had a couple of weeks of work with me doing the digger. Um, but today we're doing a little bit of silage. It's not a lot. When I say a little bit, I'll show you. See, this is the field that I'm in at the moment, and the next one is pretty much the same. It's the cattle have been in here grazing for the spring and so now we've gone through and just gone over with the mower because it's just topping it as all. Well. We just topped it and we'll gather it up and turn it into a few bales. So we're not going to get a lot of bales but there will be some bales out of it and every little bit counts because there's not loads of land here and we don't want to be buying in very much silage. So that's what I'm doing and I am using this old beastie right here now this one's not very popular around here a lot of people don't particularly like this john deere this 2030 right here it's very very similar to an 1130 that i spent a lot of time driving when i was a teenager and in fact it's exactly the same model is well not the same model this is a 2030 and not an 1130 but it's the same thing it's the same tractor just a slightly bigger version of it and i used to use that one for doing turning all the time the only difference is this one has got a loader on it don't actually need the loader and we have the classic hay bob on the back so that's what i'm going to be doing and as you can see let me just show you here not much of a windrow right? <laughs> there's really not much of a windrow coming up on this doesn't matter it really doesn't matter like we're, we're expecting to get just a couple of bales the, it, we topped it all off because of the like we get rid of the rushes and that and then it'll just help the grass to grow up a little bit as well the cattle will be out of this field now for a few weeks and that will allow everything to grow fairly evenly and then there'll be plenty of good grazing for them in afterwards so that's the plan in here and some of these fields have got a lot of rushes in them and you can see I've talked before about the rushes uh, I have talked before about the rushes and I can just show you like a couple of patches here see so you got you got the, the rushes right here and this is sort of is good for bedding and I, even when you turn it into silage it's still good for bedding there's more over here just just a, the odd patch here the best way to actually control rushes and to reduce them in the field. This field's not too bad, but some of them is like 90% rushes. The best way to control rushes is to mow them. So if we can top them off once or twice a year, that will just help the control a bit and it discourages them growing back and you get more grass growing up in between. It's better if you can cut twice. If you can just top them off twice, it really does help to knock them back and it'll get the grass growing a bit more instead and this is what we've uh well i say we this is what my dad has found and he's um he grew up on a farm that was just nothing but rushes and he's had farms in the past that were like that as well and this is uh what they found you don't need to do anything you don't need to do any plowing you don't need chemical treatments just need to cut it so that's what we're doing right here and then we're hoping that we'll get a little bit more grass out of this field in the future but we will see anyway what i'm going to do is now that i've excitedly talked all about this because i'm really quite looking forward to using this tractor because it's very much reminding me of when i was younger when i was a teenager and doing hay back then had a hay bob on the back of the 1130 i used to love doing that job so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm going to set the camera up on here somewhere, I'm hoping, so that then you've got some of the machine working. Um, I won't be able to be doing much talking while I'm doing that. But anyway, yeah, let's get that set up, shall we?
All right, that's that field done. Told you, there's not very much in here, and yes, yes, it is a bit dirty with the cows having been in here. However, uh, this will mostly be for bedding anyway, because it's mostly rushes, it'll be bedding. So um, yeah, we're gonna wrap it, and there will be a little bit of feed in it. Most of the muck does, because it's dried, it'll, it gets shaken out so there's not very much will go into the bale and these bales will be put separate from most of the other bales and it so it won't actually be used as the main feed it'll just sort of uh, um I think actually they'll just be chucked in as bedding the cattle will then pick over what they want and they'll sleep on the rest um so there'll be some food in it and mostly uh, this will be bedding and it'll be the same with the other field uh, but anyway that was sitting as when I sat you up on top of there I don't know how that will have come out it was um, yeah uh, I'm hoping it was all right but I could, I could see the camera rattling around a lot so I don't know what the self-leveling stuff is gonna be like the seat in here is a bit uncomfortable there's a there's a lump in the seat, in the seat just back in there it's a little bit uncomfortable um, but I mean, considering how old the tractor is, I think it's done, it's, it's doing reasonably well. But, uh, so the hay bob, just wanted to show you the hay bob a minute. We've got it set on rowing up. And I've talked about hay bobs before and how I quite like them. Um, you've got two different settings on here. You can see right there, let me have a look at the camera and make sure that you can see it right right here so when it's running i don't know if you noticed at the end when it's running the um force the centrifugal force is kicking them out like that so they're running in that position now when you're just turning hay oh, i need to hold it in place so i can't really do it to show you but you you pull that one back right there and you swivel it round and you put it through that other hole right there and so this instead of being out here because it's going that way it runs that way round instead of it being at that angle the angle of it is over here so it catches the hay more it holds on to it spins it round and then instead of letting it go right out through the middle here it spreads it out a bit further and these gates that we've got on here you just put them on a different notch so you put it out there out as far as it would go so that they spread a lot wider so when he's kicking out hay, you have it on a different setting and it will, it turns rather than rows up. With this one, because it's angled back like that, it doesn't hold on to it for very long and it lets it go very quickly. So then that one uh, kicks out round a little bit more. Now you might have noticed that it does actually miss some little bits in between the rows. I mean, that's just because of where I was driving right here, but it doesn't quite get everything right out to the edges. And that is a slight drawback with them. You do miss little bits. It's quite difficult to get it set up exactly. If you have it down tight enough that it is carefully gathering up everything, problem that you get is that it ends up um, breaking the tines. Or at least it would in here, because this is a little bit of a rough field. So if you go over a bit of a rough ground, it, the tine will dig in the ground. You have two different types of tine, by the way. You have those there are a bit closer together and then you have these which are a bit further apart and you alternate them so you have actually you've got special different tines on it they dig in the ground more the lower you have it you want to try and get it fairly low to the ground but if you have it too low and then you go over a bump that's when you break tines so you've got to sort of balance the two and this field is a bit rough so that's why it's up a bit and has missed a bit but that's just how it is that's how it goes um anyway I'm going to go through to the next field and I'm going to start doing some more. I've just got to put this into travel position, which you probably noticed it sort of rotating behind me. That's travel position right there. See, it wasn't that difficult. That stops it from swinging around from side to side. And that's about it, really. It's just... Oh yeah, that's... No, I, there's nothing else I need to do on here. Everything is fine. Right, I'm going to go into the next field and get going in there.
Ah, I've done another field. I don't know. I think I got most of it done while I was doing the uh, just the time lapse. I don't know how well it's come out yet, obviously, because I haven't seen it. But this one is done. There is another field, but things have been happening on and off through the day, so we haven't been able to keep it going. Um, so the other one is probably not going to get rowed up today, and the bailing won't be happening today either. That's going to be tomorrow and i won't be here so uh, i won't be getting any footage of that this time this field has got quite a bit more crop in it than the last field had the last one obviously was just a few scraggly bits this one's got a fair bit more and it's quite clean as well if you have a look at it here like you got there's a nice lot of grass in here so this will make some good silage or haylage um, there are some patches that are all rushes but like I said before if it's rushes they don't eat it very much and then that's their bedding and there's a couple of fields that's nothing but rushes and so we haven't had to buy any bedding in for them because they sleep on the rushes and that makes good bedding it's quite absorbent as well um, so all in all everything's going okay at the moment um, whether at some point in the future we have to start buying in a bit of bedding for them they are planning to buy in a bit of extra silage for them this year because um, like these fields were all cut previously and so they got quite a bit of silage out of them and now this year the cattle grazing in them we're not going to get anywhere near as much silage so they'll be buying in a bit of silage from outside and then this grass in here or the bits of rushes that are left when they do the trimming that can end up being the bedding so they don't have to buy separate bedding but they will have to buy a little bit of food but yeah we'll deal with that as and when we get there so there's the little John Deere does need a little bit of TLC the lid blew off in the storm so it has no lid at the moment but I mean that's not really much of an issue um, overall this tractor is probably as old as I am maybe even older than I am and keep in mind I'm 41 now so uh, this this tractor has seen a few years now but he's seems to be very very good still seems to be going I mean it was an 1130 that I used to use a long time ago and I used to do a bit of turning when I was a teenager so we're talking 25 years ago it was uh, an 1130 and there was a hay bob on the back of that one so this is very very similar the cab is slightly different but this is very much taking me back to when I was a teenager and working on a farm. Everything else about it is pretty much the same. The, on the only difference is this one, I think the exhaust pipe has been caught once or twice and uh, it's a little bit louder than the little one that I used to drive. But you know, other than that, I can't see any real difference. It's very, very familiar. It all feels familiar tractor just the, the the way that it drives and operates and everything everything just feels familiar about it and i quite liked it but anyway that's all i got time for this week i hope you enjoyed it i don't know what will be happening next week we will see uh but i will see you then Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.